Hi, I recently got a Macintosh LC untested and the person I got it from told me it's been sitting in a barn for years. But before I switch it on, I want to give the whole thing a good clean, make sure there aren't any shorts from the years of dirt that's accumulated on it. And the other thing, I wanted to get an appropriate keyboard as it's the correct way to turn it on. The listing for the keyboard said a few of the keys no longer worked. Hopefully not the power one. And as you can see, it's also in need of a good clean. So I'm going to take it apart, clean it up, and see if I can fix those broken keys. But before you switch off, because you've seen someone wash their keys before, there's more. As I've established, the LC is in unknown working condition. The keyboard's in unknown working condition. So I thought it'd be a great idea to make a third thing of unknown working condition to test the keyboard. Here goes. So my plan is to make an ADB to USB converter using an Arduino. And in the words of Oasis, I'll be standing on the shoulder of giants using an existing library. Everything I do use will be down in the description. So my plan is once I have the converter, I can plug the keyboard into any computer with a USB port and see which keys do and don't work. Whenever you connect a USB device to a computer, you might have noticed that it tends to detect what it is, whether it's a mass storage device, a keyboard, or a mouse. Well, when you connect an Arduino, it also knows what it is. It shows up as an Arduino with a USB to serial converter, and that's what's used to write the code to the chip. And starting with the Arduino Uno, this was done with a programmable Atmega 8U2, or 16U2, depending on the model. This is essentially a second microcontroller that contains the firmware for the USB to serial communication. A later model, the Leonardo, had a microcontroller with built-in USB communication. This meant it could act as a virtual serial port as well as act as a human interface device, which what we're doing would be absolutely perfect. I don't have a Leonardo. So I'm going to use this Arduino Mega, which is essentially a beefed up Uno. So to make it act like a keyboard when it's plugged in, I'm going to have to change the firmware of the USB controller. So it can pretend that it is a keyboard. But obviously before I do that, I'm going to need to write the code to it. Because once it thinks it's a keyboard, I can't write to it anymore. I'm going to be using this sketch, which takes in the ADB signal and outputs it as the correct keys. Sounds perfect. So with the Arduino connected and selected in the IDE, just upload the sketch. And now that that's on there, we can make it pretend it's a keyboard. To be able to write the firmware to the chip, you first need to get it into DFU mode, or Device Firmware Update mode. This is just the state that allows the firmware to be flashed to the chip. And this can just be done by shorting the two pins closest to the reset switch. The LED will flash, but the telltale sign is it no longer shows as an option in the Arduino IDE. Then you need something to write to it. If you're using Windows, there's a program called Atmel Flip. Or if, like me, you're using a Mac, there's a command line program called DFU Programmer. So once you have the keyboard firmware downloaded, and there's one in the Git repository linked in the description, we then begin by erasing the chip. Then flashing with the firmware and resetting. And now hopefully it thinks it's a keyboard when it's plugged in. So now to connect the keyboard to the Arduino, we're going to need to make an adapter. The connector on an ADB keyboard is a 4-pin mini DIN, the same connector used on this video, which if you're looking to buy one, is a lot easier to search for. Then it's pretty simple to connect up. Pin 4 goes to ground, pin 3 to 5 volts, and pin 1, the data line, needs to go to pin 8 on the Arduino. There's also a pull-up resistor between the 5V and the data line. I'm using a 10K resistor. And I'm just going to be making it on this scrap piece of strip board as I'm cheap and it'll do the job. If you're making something a bit more complicated and need a lot more connections to the Arduino, then using something like strip board is actually a bit of a pain as the headers don't line up. And if you believe the legend, it's because working late one night on the design to get it sent off for the PCBs to be printed, the headers were accidentally shifted on the <coughs> Gerber file. And since then, they've had to live with it for backwards compatibility. It's also a convenient way to sell official prototype boards, but you can get offset header pins, so there are some workarounds. For my board, I'm gonna plug it directly into the five volt and ground on this side and the pin eight on this side, 
So with the three pins, it's still easy enough to fit. So connectors in general come under a lot of stress. And as you can see on this S-Video connector, there's this extra anchor pin at the front to give it a bit more strength when it's in. And as I'm going to be putting the connector right on the edge of the board, you're going to need to drill an extra hole right here. There, so now that's in, I can solder it in for extra strength. Just ignore the extra solder on the board. And with that in place, I can put the rest in. For the header pins, I'm just going to use the legs of the resistor, as, once again, I'm being cheap and I don't want to waste anything good. And then using a drill bit, I'm going to cut all the tracks where it needs to be cut. I have got a proper tool for this somewhere, but this will do the job. And now everything's ready, so we can have the moment of truth. Can I use a 1990s keyboard on a reasonably new MacBook? Yep, it's recognised the keyboard after a good start. So just have to set it up. Nothing. Nothing. Hello, darkness, my old friend. So I went back over everything. I reverted the firmware, I re-uploaded the sketch, installed the firmware again, and checked all the connections and still nothing. It's possible the keyboards are dud. So I went up into my loft, I looked around and found an old Arduino Uno. Technically it's what the sketch was written for, so I am going to try with that and hopefully have a bit more luck. I didn't. So the next issue I had, which I failed to record, was failing to flash the firmware using the DFU programmer. Unperturbed by this, I thought I'd try Windows using Flip, which also gave errors. But by the fifth attempt, it managed to complete. So, with all other options that I'm prepared to do, exhausted, this is my last shot. Amazing, I've got no idea why it didn't work with the Mega. If you've got any idea, let me know in the comments, because as far as I'm aware, it's completely compatible with the Uno. So after testing every key, they all work apart from 5, 2 and 0. And as they're all in a line, there's a good chance there's a bad trace. I'll take it all apart now, give it a good clean and see if I can see anything wrong with those keys. So to get into the keyboard, there are three screws in the front and the back's held in with some plastic clips. As you can see, someone's clearly been into this one, which is never a good sign. And unclipping these things is always a bit scary as the plastic tends to get brittle. Look, you can see how yellow this thing's become. The keyboard itself is held in with another three screws at the top and connected with a ribbon cable. And the ribbon cable is held in by this plug which just pulls up and the cable comes out. There really isn't much in the way of components here, but the most important part being the National Semiconductor's 8-bit microprocessor. So now I'm going to remove all the keys. You can get a special tool for this called a key puller, which I would recommend, despite not using it here, as the plastic is very brittle and it's a right pain to get the keys off. And as if by magic, all the keys are gone, and all that's left behind is this disgusting grimy residue. And on the back of the keyboard, there's one small screw and a ridiculous number of clips. So with that off, you can see the flexible PCB. And as you can see, it's also filthy. So my first step is to clean that up in case that's causing the issue with the keys. So 
So just being careful of the contacts here, but if you can look, you can see how grimy it is. Now I'll clean all the contacts with some IPA. And now I can give the rest a good scrub. Time for cleaning montage. So with it all cleaned up, it's time to test. And it's still not working. And to be honest, I'm not that surprised. And now doing what I probably should have done in the first place, I'm going to test all the connections by shorting it out with a piece of wire. And that works, so there must be a connection there, so there's no clear break. So my guess is there's too high a resistance when using the key plunger to register the press. And as I swapped all the plungers around when cleaning, I don't think they're the issue. Okay, so as we know, these three keys have the issue. And the common thing between them is this trace. And that runs all the way up here. So let's check the resistance along this trace. The resistance between these pads, as expected, is pretty low. But if you go up to this top pad, as you can see, it's pretty high. So there must be something wrong along this trace. Okay, going over the whole thing, the only thing I've spotted is this tiny mark. It doesn't wash off, and I can see it on both sides. My guess would be a bit of dirt that's pressed against it and caused a slight break. It's not gonna be easy to solder this, so I'm gonna need something else to bridge the break. I've used silver paint for things like this before, but this time I thought I'd try this liquid wire. I've seen it advertised around and never used it before. It's a conductive paint that when dried should provide a lower resistance across the break. So I'm just going to scratch it back to expose the wire. And check it's actually exposed. Okay, well that's a more reasonable resistance. Oh well, it definitely needs fixing now as there's a clean break across. And the top part. Great, it's exposed on both sides and the resistance looks good too. So now I can bridge the gap with some liquid wire. There, that resistance looks a lot better. I'll 
finish it off with some capped on tape, not so much to stop it shorting, but just to give it a bit of extra protection. Now I'll reassemble it and see if that fixed it. And there we go, all keys working. And there we have it, a fully working Apple ADB keyboard. I probably won't be using it as a daily driver, but it's gonna be perfect when I get the LC up and running. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. If you wanna see what I'm up to next, remember to hit subscribe and thanks for watching.